Oh, this story is sure not to be problematic. The movie begins on a small island off the west coast where a photographer named Samuel roams around taking pictures. We notice that most people he takes pictures of are sleeping in random places. As it turns out, a strange crisis has hit the island. Three days ago, people started falling asleep out of nowhere, in the middle of a car ride, inside a sauna, and even, well, swimming underwater. That guy's dead. At first, the observers were simply confused, but they soon found out that the ones who slept would not wake up, almost as if they were in a coma. Several doctors and researchers have come to the island in the past 72 hours, but no one has found a cure to the unique pandemic. By now, all the permanent residents of the island are asleep. The lucky ones in their homes, some at work, while others are in the grocery store or in their cars. Their bodies are functioning properly, except anytime they are moved from the original place they fell asleep, their pulse goes abnormally high. An interesting thing about the situation is that the phenomenon doesn't affect those who were not a permanent resident of the island prior to the occurrence. Hence, scientists have established a camp and put tags on every sleeping human on the island to keep track of them. Currently, no reporter is allowed in the infected zone, but Samuel has somehow managed to sneak through the border amidst the chaos. While on the adventure, he enters a bus full of sleeping passengers to take pictures. He discovers a woman holding a live goldfish and decides to take it with him. In the bizarre circumstance, Samuel feels like the fish is his only friend, and he talks to the animal accordingly. Sometime later, they end up at a house which looks good enough to spend a few days in. Samuel cautiously walks in to find a woman sleeping on her bed. Her name is Stella, and she was one of the lucky last ones to fall asleep. Samuel avoids invading her privacy and stays in the other room, not realizing that the researchers are outside his house guarding the area. Since everyone conscious has been asked to leave the island, he is afraid he will be punished if found. The following day, Samuel dreams of going to the grocery store and running into Stella, but she hardly pays any attention to him. Oh not even in his dreams. He is woken up abruptly when he calls her by her name, and she asks him how he knows it. A new day sparks a new adventure for Samuel, as he talks to a sleeping Stella while listening to the news on the radio. The entire world is talking about the pandemic, and the bizarre controversies are starting to roll in. Laughing at them, Samuel decides to explore the island in the daylight. The first person he notices is a handyman stuck to a tree, sleeping peacefully. He also finds out the animals on the island are still alive, and wonders who who is taking care of them. After about an hour of walking, he reaches the church where a large group of people are unconscious. Taking a few pictures, Samuel settles into a seat and falls asleep. In his dream, he and Stella are sitting opposite each other in a restaurant. They act like they have known each other forever and chat about what Samuel is doing on the island. Stella doesn't approve that he is taking advantage of the situation for money, but Samuel argues that he is there for the experience, not the money. Later the money, maybe, but not now. Later on, he returns home and goes through Stella's belongings to find her daily journal. As he reads it, his connection to Stella gets stronger, and he continues dreaming about her. In the dream, she tells him that she was one of the last ones to get hit. The first the person she saw falling unconscious was her piano teacher, who slept in the middle of a class on being asked if she was scared. Stella replies that she was more confused. The doctors and researchers came but only discovered that the people should not be moved from the places they fell asleep. Stella finds it funny that there is a chance her heart will explode if she gets up from her bed. Samuel says if she does that, his dick might explode too. Samuel then takes the opportunity to ask her how she felt when she fell asleep. Stella describes it as a surreal feeling. She had strange vivid dreams and eventually got lost in them, not realizing that she was falling into a deep sleep. The scene then changes to the next day, and Samuel sets out on yet another adventure. He goes to a different neighborhood this time around and ends up seeing a car filled with balloons. While trying to take a picture of it, he notices the health workers nearby and has to run back home. The incident brings Samuel back to reality, and he decides to leave the island, having taken enough pictures. He wishes goodbye to Stella, packs his belongings, and goes to the shore where his boat is. However, However, after spending quite some time at the shore looking at the boat, he decides otherwise. Just when he reaches home, he sees the faucet is running. Samuel remembers that it was running the first time he entered the house, but he is positive that he had turned it off. Suddenly, he is transferred back to his dream, sitting opposite Stella at the restaurant. She inquires about the actual reason he came to the island. Samuel finally comes clean that he came here to look at boobies. <laughs> Just kidding. He came here for her. As it turns out, one year ago, he was on the island on vacation when he saw Stella at the grocery store. He followed her to a restaurant later 
earlier that day where she seemed young and free, which piqued his interest. But before he could ask for her number, the night ended and he never got to meet her again. Back in reality, Samuel goes to the grocery store to shop, but two researchers come in to get some alcohol at the same time. One of them bumps into Samuel, but he avoids getting caught by pretending to be unconscious. After they are gone, he delightedly shops for essentials and even pays the sleeping cashier before bringing the groceries home. After that, we see him roam around Stella's house, observing her belongings and imagining what her personality would be like. He hits the jackpot when he finds a tape recorder in the attic that has recordings of the list of her favorite things. The list has random things, like the sound of a typewriter, headless Barbie dolls, and flamingo floaties. But the more Samuel listens to it, the more his infatuation grows, even though judging by that tape, she's a complete psychopath. On the list, Stella describes that driving on the beach is her favorite thing to do. And so, Samuel imagines him and Stella outside looking for a car to drive to the beach. He dreads the idea of stealing from sleeping people, but Stella convinces him that they are just borrowing it. They soon find a car they like and break into the owner's house to look for the keys. Samuel enjoys Stella's free-spirited nature and the fact that she's a criminal and starts believing that she is more than just his imagination. A while later, he wakes up to the sound of a car outside and notices two health workers coming into the house for a weekly checkup. He hurriedly takes all of his belongings and hides in a closet seconds before being caught. The workers check Stella for any abnormalities and leave not long after. Samuel spends the rest of his day laying beside Stella's bed and talking to her. Stella, I think I've gone insane. What's that? I haven't? Oh, that's a relief. The next day, he yet again goes to the attic and plays the second part of her tape. This time, she talks about the things she hates and reveals that she feels lonely and vulnerable. Samuel wishes he could do something to make her feel better, which in turn makes him feel helpless. Yet again, he drifts into his imagination and starts chatting with her. The duo talks about soulmates and how everyone has one. Samuel suggests they might be each other's soulmate, but Stella doesn't believe it. Coming back to reality, Samuel finally decides to go back home. Now that he has no purpose to be on the island, he makes it halfway to the dock but cannot get himself to leave Stella. At night, he returns home and gets high off Stella's stash, dreaming about them smoking together. Starting that day, he makes it his mission to do all the things that were on Stella's list of things she loved. He makes lasagna and drinks beer out of a wine glass for the same reason. When tipsy, Stella appears in his dreams, furious about him not leaving her alone. She declares that the version of Stella he knows from her journals and tapes is not her. Her. Samuel recognizes that she is right. After all, he has never talked to her in real life, and their relationship is entirely in his head. As he tries convincing himself coming to the island was not a mistake, Stella asks him to leave her alone and disappears into the darkness. In the following scene, Samuel once again decides to leave, but his journey is different this time around. He feels extremely thirsty on his way and gets strange hallucinations. To quench his thirst, he breaks into an apartment, but the more he drinks, the thirstier he gets. The walls start closing on on him, filling him up with anxiety, which is when he realizes he is about to fall asleep like the others. As he tries his best to stay awake, he gets a call from imaginary Stella who calls him back home. He suddenly wakes up and returns to her house in a hurry, asserting that if falling asleep is inevitable, he would rather sleep close to her. The next morning, to Samuel's utter surprise, he wakes up. However, he is unsure how long he can stay awake for. Taking the opportunity at hand, he writes notes for Stella in case she ever gets to read them. It takes him the entire day, and at the end, he too falls into a coma. Time passes, and a few days later, Stella moves in her sleep. Things take a turn when she opens her eyes, wide awake after being asleep for more than a week. She realizes that she has no energy and goes to drink water from the faucet. This is when she sees a second toothbrush on the counter and figures someone else has been living with her. While cautiously approaching a sleeping Samuel in the living room, Stella is more confused than scared. She wants to wake him up but gives up after a few tries. The house is filled with random objects she likes, like a Barbie without her head and a giant flamingo floaty. Stella is pleasantly surprised to see them, but it washes away. As soon as she finds out, Samuel read her journals and listened to her tapes. In a fit of rage, she hits him several times and discovers the notes he wrote for her. In them, he apologizes to her for listening to her tapes and assures her that she is like everyone else. He tells her feeling lonely and building up a defense system is okay, but asks her to be herself. The notes overwhelm Stella, and she figures out that the stranger in her house knows 
knows her inside out, and she too feels like she has known him forever. In the next few days, she gets several dreams with Samuel in them. They chat about his likes, dislikes, fears, and responsibilities, as he did with her in his dreams. Even though they have not even met each other in real life, Stella knows they are connected. Hence, she takes care of him like he did to her. Then comes the morning when Stella wakes up later than usual, to a pleasant surprise. Samuel is no longer on the sofa he was sleeping on. The two meet each other in the kitchen for the first time, but to them, it feels like they are lovers, reuniting after decades. Samuel introduces himself and shakes hands with her, delighted to know that she is just as happy to meet him. In the final scene, we are brought back to the bus where it all started. The woman whose goldfish Samuel had stolen wakes up from her sleep, and we see that she now has two fishies in her hands, instead of one. This movie brought to you by Chloroform. Except for a few people back in London. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.